One of the most intriguing aspects of the PC hardware and gaming industry, I find, is how certain trends can change the outlook on specific features and technologies. Stuff that was rejected in the past is now a staple feature. People can't seem to play their games without it. I'm talking about upscaling and frame gen. When DLSS was first announced back in 2018, almost everyone was in agreement that this is a feature you may just want to use as a last resort, or not at all. Fast forward 5 years, the tables have completely turned where PC gamers are saying upscaling tech is the way they play their games primarily, setting a foundation for the future where upscaled gaming is normality. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. AMD's FSR 3 along with their fluid motion frames technology was released last week and it's created quite a lot of hype within the PC gaming community. This was a feature that many people were anticipating, especially owners of AMD GPUs, as they didn't have features that were on parity with the likes of Nvidia, such as their frame generation technology or reflex. However, now that it's here, people are excited and I personally think AMD have done a good job with it from the first impressions I'm seeing here. They've got something here that's working for them, so it's a matter of how they plan on carrying this momentum forward and improving upon it. For those that haven't been keeping up, FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution is AMD's upscaling tech. When you enable this feature in a game that supports it, the game will lower its internal resolution, then using an algorithm, upscale it to a higher resolution to bring that image as close as possible to native with the benefits of higher performance since you're technically running the game at a lower resolution. Frame generation works just like how the name implies. It's essentially frame rate interpolation where between real frames using an algorithm it'll insert generated frames in accordance with the visuals on screen. This then makes the game appear to be running much smoother since now there's more frames per second even though they aren't technically quote unquote real frames. And when working in tandem with upscaling tech, you may see a significant boost of up to double the FPS if not even more. However, using these features can of course incur a latency penalty which is why they have also developed and implemented a feature called anti-lag plus. Anti-lag is a feature that's been around for quite some time and it helps to reduce the latency by reducing the time passed between the game's sampling of user controls and the output appearing on display. Anti-lag plus takes this to the next level by applying frame alignment within the game code itself, allowing for better frame syncing, which leads to even lower latency. The downside is that it needs to be implemented on a game by game basis, but if the dev is adding frame gen, then you can be certain anti-lag plus will be there as well. It's actually a necessity as the latency would be too high and very noticeable. Nvidia has their Reflex technology which works similarly and is available in a wide variety of games like COD, Fortnite, and most recently Counter-Strike 2. So far, AMD has released FSR 3 in a select few titles, with Forspoken being one of them, and at this point Forspoken is essentially a glorified tech demo, because it was one of the first to support direct storage so it got some attention there, and now recently with FSR 3 it's getting a lot of attention again. But the game itself is straight up garbage and was reviewed very poorly, right now over on Steam charts there's only like 74 people playing it and a similar amount playing the demo which if you weren't aware the demo was also recently updated to support FSR 3. So if you want to try out AMD's frame gen tech this is one of the best ways to do it. I tried it out briefly on my test bench but right now I've got the 4090 in there which means FSR 3 or DLSS 3 isn't really needed as it performs pretty decently without them as it's such a powerful card. Even at 4k with everything maxed out with ray tracing enabled. With those settings at native settings I was getting around 70 to 80 FPS, the game was totally playable. However, just to see what kind of performance or visual impacts we'd see, I turned on FSR 3 using the quality preset and had also enabled frame gen and you can see the frame rate counter is reporting over double the FPS. Ignore the weird frame time behavior with FSR 3 frame gen turned on, it's clearly not reporting the right frame times. That in and of itself is pretty impressive to see at first, however as someone who games regularly on a high refresh monitor and usually lower settings to attain a high FPS target, it definitely didn't feel like a true 170 FPS experience. Don't get me wrong, it felt a bit smoother, but definitely not as smooth as if it was actually running at 170 FPS. Heck, even native 120 FPS feels smoother. 
With that said, the latency wasn't bad at all, I really had no complaints, and I'm sure we can attribute that to anti like Plus doing a decent job. Visually, I didn't see too much artifacting, but I could see more blur than usual, especially during fast panning actions, especially in areas like the grass. Like in a fight, for example, where you need to be looking around a lot, it was also noticeable there. So that was detrimental to the experience. But overall, the limited experience I had using FSR 3 was that it's alright, and then bear in mind, we were also getting decent performance as our base FPS, and I may need to revisit this again with a slower GPU, one where we can't get as high of a frame rate at native quality settings. For tech like frame gen and upscaling, having a high base FPS at least 60 makes a big difference, especially when it comes to input lag. I'll also have to try out other games with this once the tech is more widely adopted, because different games can have different implementations, and it also works better with some different engines, something that I did notice with Nvidia's DLSS and their frame generation tech. There are plenty of videos out there on YouTube that showcase people using this technology in lower tiered graphics cards, and also show comparisons of native versus upscaled, along with frame generation. So I recommend checking them out if you're looking for more or immediate info pertaining to that. What I wanted to shift our focus to next was the reception towards FSR 3, DLSS, and frame gen in general from the PC gaming tech community, now that we've also gotten AMD to join Nvidia with their frame gen tech. What kind of implications are we looking at when it comes to PC gaming? I mentioned this at the start of the video, but one of the things that's always fascinating to me is how over time stuff that was rejected in the past ends up becoming tolerable, accepted, and even highly sought after. And this doesn't just apply to tech, but I remember when DLSS first came out in 2018, a lot of people, myself included, were quick to disregard it. Here, DLSS looks worse than a 1685p image at the same performance, so enabling DLSS in a real-world game like Battlefield 5 is actually worse than using simple resolution upscaling that's been available in games for decades. And that's why DLSS is complete rubbish. Now, to be fair, over time the software engineers at Nvidia and AMD have done a tremendous job at improving the technology. Just go back and take a look at some of the old DLSS and FSR 1.0 footages. They were terrible. The image quality was noticeably worse than native, but now with these newer iterations, they've improved the algorithm so much that the image quality in many cases is comparable to native, at least to my eye, when using just a quality preset. I personally don't go below the quality preset because to me then it becomes noticeable. But what I mean is that sometimes when using these upscaling features and using the different presets, it's hard to distinguish between native and you have to be really zooming in and really looking for the differences. And let's be real here, who's really playing their games like that. Hence, people's opinions have gradually changed from a negative one to a more positive one. Of course, we can't forget about one of the biggest advantages, which is the performance uplifts, and this is also what's very attractive to people. And something I wanted to touch upon from one of my previous videos where I talked about people are reluctant to go into a settings menu and lower some settings, I could be wrong, but I think it's more of a psychological thing. You guys can let me know in the comments below, but I think people are more comfortable running settings on ultra or high with upscaling rather than playing at native with a mixture of low, medium, medium and high settings. Which sounds better to you, upscaled with ultra settings or native with optimized settings? When Nvidia first announced DLSS 3 with frame generation, a lot of people over on the AMD subreddit were quick to bash the technology, denouncing it as quote unquote fake frames. Some going as far as to say you should just write 999 on a sticky note and place it on the corner of your screen. As soon as AMD announced FSR 3 with frame generation, all of a sudden the outlook changed to a more positive one. Then once we got the FSR 3 update for Immortals of Avium and for Spoken, the comments I've seen regarding FSR 3 makes it sound like it's one of the most revolutionary tech in the history of PC gaming. It's a total 180, so I personally found the duality there to be absolutely hilarious. Though just just reading through a lot of these comments, seeing the videos people were making surrounding FSR 3, it seems to have been accepted really well with mostly positive feedback. This thread by a user on Reddit states FSR 3 is amazing, gone from the 50 FPS range to a constant 120 FPS, looks great, amazing tech. Another user posted their findings with a 6700 XT, and they seem to be in agreement for the most part. Here's another post stating they're really pleased with the results from FSR 3, as it's providing them with a satisfying image quality and performance boost at the same time. I've seen comments on YouTube videos stating similar stuff. People saying they're really happy with the results, some stating their experience has been close to native, and that they're actually feeling the performance boost. Now this is all subjective at the end of the day, and it really comes down to user preferences. This person wrote that they tried it on their RX 6700, 
and went from 45 to 90 FPS according to the FPS counter, so that's a double, but it didn't feel like they were actually running at double the frame rate. So their experience is very similar to the one I had. You can tell it's running a bit smoother, but it's definitely inferior compared to how it would have actually ran if it was really running at 90 FPS. And they also stated native looks better to them. One of the other downsides to keep reading about is that apparently FSR 3 frame gen doesn't work with FreeSync or VRR, which those technologies also help with smoothness. So if it really doesn't, I think that's a big blunder on AMD's part. And you know, that's a update they should work on getting out as soon as as soon as they can and the other thing is that it also doesn't work with hdr so if you got a nice oled panel or a mini led monitor and you want to take advantage of the vibrant images while using frame gen well as of now it's apparently a no-go i've talked to other youtubers some who are quite happy with fsr3 and some who straight up will not use any upscaling or frame gen tech and that's totally fine this is the beauty of pc gaming that you can configure your hardware the way you want and you can also run your games however you want if you want to run everything maxed out 4k with path tracing and you're okay with 30 fps go for it or if you want 300 fps but you want to run at potato quality that's also an option too i personally like to take every Everything with a more optimized and tuned approach, whereas some are okay with built-in presets and out-of-the-box settings. For me, I find it to be very situational. On most games, I personally just tone down settings and try to use native resolution as much as I can, but there have been instances where I've used DLSS with a quality preset, and in some cases, I've also used frame generation. I bring up a game like Hitman 3. This is a game that's a perfect candidate for using these features because it's not a game that requires fast inputs or really fast motion. Most of the time, you're just walking around an area, observing your environments to take down your targets. I think a game like Flight Simulator later is also a prime example. You're just flying a plane and you're just looking at the environment. Again, you don't need fast inputs from the user, so frame generation is perfect there. But another takeaway I'm getting from this is that due to the positive reception of these technologies, Going forward, I think we're going to start seeing a shift in the PC gaming and hardware landscape where playing games using upscaling and also with frame gen will be the norm and people who run native or optimize the settings themselves will be considered irregular. I recently ran a community poll asking if people use upscaling tech like DLSS, FSR, or ZSS and the majority of you said that you do use it. Some said they will always use it, some said they use it with a quality preset, and some use it to game at higher resolutions and that would otherwise would not work with their GPU. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying everyone is feeling good about it and wants to use it, but it also seems like people will sort of be forced to use the tech out of a necessity due to how modern games are coming out today and run. Sure, you could argue that when using technologies like ray tracing or path tracing, you need to use it, but there are games out there like Starfield or Remnant 2 which run like crap without even using ray tracing and with visuals from 2015. I'm not sure why some people got confused by my last video thinking I was so solely blaming the user when I did clarify I agree that there are poorly optimized games out there. Taking a look at Remnant 2's visuals, yeah the game looks good, but it's nothing earth shattering or something that we haven't seen before. I mean when you take a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider which came out in 2018 so it's a 5 year old game at this point, that game's visuals look just as good if not better in some ways compared to Remnant 2. It runs a lot better and this is with ray tracing enabled. Now that we've gotten AMD's FSR 3 and their announcement that it's coming to many more games, this opens up that door to a lot more users and people who will be inclined to use it. There's most certainly a substantial number of users who do want to use these features to play their games now. It's why there was so much outcry when Bethesda Starfield was confirmed not to have DLSS at launch. This also ties in with the growing cost of hardware. As prices go up, people will be less likely to upgrade and want to write out their existing configurations as much as possible. and Poor optimized games coming out is definitely not helping with that. So the fact that someone can use some of these features to breathe new life into older hardware comes off as very appealing. I've seen various videos of people running an RX 580, a GPU that is 8 years old considering it's based on pl the Polaris architecture, perform decently with these technologies in newer games whereas without them it would be struggling pretty hard. But on the other hand, some of the other implications I can see here is that hardware manufacturers will be more inclined to give the user or the consumer less hardware for their money and we've we're seeing that right now with cards like the 4060 the rx 7600 they're saying that hey guess what you can just use dlss and also frame generation and you'll get the same performance as what you would have gotten had we given you a proper upgrade with more hardware for that cost of money 
and honestly, who knows what the future holds. Instead of getting GPUs, we might just get ASICs that are AI accelerators, and all they're gonna do is just let the AI render the whole entire game for you. It doesn't matter what the FPS will say, it'll just put whatever number on there, and there you go, that's your game. But in regards to DLSS and upscaling tech, FSR, before I would typically run my tests and benchmarks without upscaling, but I think I'll start to include a portion of testing utilizing those settings because, hey, clearly people are okay with this, and a lot of you guys want this, this is how they're choosing to play their games. What I'm also afraid of at the same time is that developers will take note of this hype and acceptance and say, screw optimizing our games, let's just work on implementing the best versions of these upscaling tech and frame gen features and optimize those rather than the actual game itself and tell users to enable them when playing the games. That actually will be easier for them. Heck, I will not be surprised if we start seeing games come out where they're just automatically enabled and you can't even turn them off, they're just baked in. It's sort of happening now, like for example when I was testing out Starfield and was playing around with presets, FSR and things like variable rate shading were automatically being turned on, so I had to manually adjust those. So for folks who don't thoroughly go through their settings menu, just roll with automatic presets, they won't even realize that they're playing an upscaled game. And a lot of the times you get a message when you start up a game for the first time saying, we've detected what hardware you have in your PC, these are the settings we recommend, are you okay or do you want to go in the settings option? And I could see a lot of people just pressing okay and saying, yeah, let me play my game, whatever. Now that I think about it, this is actually the case with a lot of game consoles. They're just utilizing upscaling tech like FSR and a lot of users don't care. They don't even go into settings menus. As long as it looks acceptable, runs at a solid consistent frame rate, they won't care. So I personally feel like what we're going through here is a substantial shift shift in the way games are starting to be played. Unless you're running an expensive flagship graphics card, you're probably going to be running your games with some form of upscaling, possibly with frame generation. The PC gaming landscape has undergone a profound transformation. With the rapid acceptance and evolution of upscaling technologies like AMD's FSR3 and Nvidia's DLSS, coupled with frame generation features, what was initially met with skepticism has become a game changer for many, offering significant performance uplifts while achieving image quality almost on par with native resolution. This shift in gamer attitudes from resistance to enthusiastic adoption has been driven by the attraction of improved performance and the ability to maintain high graphical settings. However, user preferences remain diverse, with some still opting for manual settings while remaining at native. Along with that, the rising cost of hardware and subpar game optimization have made upscaling and frame generation increasingly active, potentially leading to a new standard in PC gaming. Developers may embrace these trends, but it also raises concerns about the prioritization of these features over actual optimization. As PC gaming evolves, these technologies will also, and they'll continue to shape the gaming experience for a broad audience. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.